So hey guys, welcome. When I have my husband on our Sunday night meditation class, I often get people commenting how much they love seeing him, how much they love seeing us interact. It made me think perhaps you would like to hear him spill the tea on me. Uh, what is it like to be married to me? What is it like being in a relationship with Kaylin, the YouTuber, life coach, person, and get a chance to know a little bit more about us and him. So, hey honey. Hello. So if you don't know him, his name is Anthony. He is beautiful and wonderful and talented. <laughs> so, uh, what's it like to be married to me? What's it like to be married to Kaylin? Uh, it's, it's amazing. Yeah, I would say it is everything you see there on TV or on your YouTube uh, channel. I think that's something I admire and love most about my husband is that uh, there really is no secrets with him. Uh, totally open, authentic, transparent, um, vulnerable. I sometimes watch his videos and say, I can't believe you told them that. Um, so I, I feel like you get such an intimate experience of my husband. The only thing that you're missing is the 24-7 experience. But uh, I really do tell people, if you want to know my husband, just watch the stuff he puts out, read his books. I mean, it's really what he's like. There's no putting on airs or being a different person in front of you than he is with me. Is it all challenging to be married to somebody who's constantly talking about his private life and talking about our relationship and talking about things that we discuss? Uh, it, it can be challenging, but I think it's challenging in a way that allows me or has me question why I'm feeling challenged by it. Same way. Um, so I think like when you do share intimate things or what I would consider private, you know, I you know, ask myself, well, why do I feel like it's private? And why do I feel like it's something that I may, I myself may not want to share? And I think sometimes there's shame or there's uh, fear of being judged. And then that allows me to move into a deeper space of like, well, why am I afraid of being judged? So. It, it's challenging in a way that I wouldn't do it myself, but when you put, when you create that opportunity for me to reflect as to why am I having those feelings, I feel like I grow uh, and appreciate the fact that you push those boundaries for me. Well, we've been together for over eight years, and I've been doing this YouTube channel for about three. Is this something that you're surprised that we're doing now? Is this something that you feel like uh, you would have anticipated it years ago? Has it changed life for you in any capacity? Yeah, it's a good question. Uh, and I think we've talked about this a bit too. So when we met, my husband was very much in the throes of his career as an actor. And uh, I had just left LA and I had a rule while living in LA that I would not date an actor. Um, I mean, it was more of a funny rule and a lot of people in LA had it who weren't in the industry. So I just kind of followed that rule of thumb and I never did date an actor while I was in LA. And then when I moved to Chicago, the first person I meet uh, and the love of my life, I find out is an actor. And I'm like, why did I move from LA to Chicago to meet an actor? Uh, but one of the things that really attracted me to him and something that really resonated with my soul was that he was such a strong spiritual person. And one of my life goals uh, at that point and still is, was to create a retreat center where spirituality and sexuality, wholeness and uh, healing could be done. Um, and so when I met Kaylin, I was like, oh my God, this is my partner who is going to help and create the space. And like my soul just knew that. And so when, and he was living in an ashram at the time and a deep religious practice. And so I remember telling him, I just don't feel like you're meant to be an actor. Not that anything's wrong with it being an actor, but I felt like his life purpose was to be a spiritual teacher. 
and he very much did not uh, like that. Uh, and, and it, what, to a certain degree scared him or... Yeah. Um, but yeah, I, I mean, I felt that since the moment I met him. So seeing you do what you do today, uh, he'll often ask me, can you believe I'm doing this or can you believe we're here? And I respond, absolutely. Like, this is the man I fell in love with. Uh, so it's not something different to me as much as it's a becoming. Is it at all challenging being married to somebody who you know, doesn't have what many people would consider like a normal job, right? Like I don't go to work nine to five every day. I'm here meeting with people one-on-one -on -one virtually, or I'm working in a YouTube video, I'm working on a social media post, or I'm writing, or doing something along those lines is, does, is that hard? Is, do you like being partnered with somebody who doesn't have the more routine sort of life? I think at first I, I, it was a bit jarring because I had so defined work as like a nine to five or something that was a steady paycheck or something that had rigidity to it. Um, and I don't work necessarily a nine to five job. You know, my job now is very fluid and, and flexible, but I really have come to love the fact that you have a much more flexible and creative and dynamic job. Um, you know, I think we fit well together in that respect. It gives you flexibility that I may not have. Um, and it also creates this opportunity in our relationship to have creative energy that I, I get so much from and am fed by mm -hmm. that I wouldn't want you to have a different type of occupation. Like it's, um, and that's something that I find really attractive is creative energy. And so it's something that I get fueled by and I appreciate it. So it took a little getting used to that, you know, I, you didn't have, but you're also a very productive person. So, or efficient, I should say. Something that would take me weeks to do, my husband can do in a couple of hours. So in our relationship, I've just been very uh, admired and also Sorry. jealous of the fact that you can get stuff done so quickly. So, no, I mean, I... Um, I don't think it's challenging. I think it's one of the benefits of our relationship. So, obviously, the things we talk about here on Ecstatic Self are about the merging of spirituality and sexuality being two of the big ideas. Tell me, how has your connection both to your spiritual life and your sexual life changed by being in a relationship with me? Hmm. So spiritual life, I would say, you know, I consider my, my husband to be my best friend, uh, my lover, but also my spiritual teacher in a way that, you know, even what we've been talking about, lessons I'm able to learn from our relationship that are that, that create opportunities on a surface level but because we have the relationship that we do it goes deeper into a much more spiritual level and i appreciate that about our relationship is that uh and it's something i've never had before is to have a relationship where i'm able to take the daily engagements and see divine lessons in it mm -hmm. Um, and it's something that I appreciate. Like one of the things that we love to do is go on walks every evening. We take the two pups for a walk and we get to process life and not in a, uh, super intentional way. It's just very organic, the way that we kind of process. Um, and I find that to be part of my spiritual practice with my husband. Sexually, uh, I think... That is something that, you know, it's amazing to have a partner and where 
eight years later, I'm just an even more turned on than I was when I first met him. Uh, and it has to do with the richness, richness of our relationship um, and the affection that he holds for me and the intentionality that he has with expressing that affection. Um, it's, it's been amazing. It's uh, a wonderful experience to have someone in your life who you're able to connect on all those levels and then have mind-blowing intimacy with. And that's what I love. Like, sex isn't... It's not about intercourse, it's about intimacy, and it's also about hormones and eroticism and but in ways that aren't necessarily your traditional, like, getting off, yeah. uh, which I love. Has, you know, being eight years into a relationship, has it always been easy, the uh, sexual connection and intimacy, or is it something we have to work out? Yeah, no, I mean, I would say it's, yeah, it's definitely something that has its ebbs and flows. Um, as, as any relationship does, and as any person does, right? There are times that we are more turned on mm -hmm. and there are times that we're not. There are times we're more, you know, stressed about life. And I know for me, my stress level has a direct correlation to my ability to be intimate. Yeah. Um, and connected in general. Right. Yeah. And so I think that's been something that's been helpful, that you've been helpful for me, is one, noticing that. Uh, and then to addressing it, um, which is something that I'm working on. One of the things that really applaud us as a couple for navigating through is change. Um, I frequently comment that one of the fun things about making love to my husband is that every time it's different. Like, every time it's a different flavor. Sometimes it's more playful, sometimes it's more animalistic, sometimes it's more tender, sometimes, like, every time it's different and how we've approached each other continues to evolve and change in the ways we connect, what we like to do, how we hold each other physically and literally. Our relationship is going through a big evolution of how we express our sexual energy with each other or with other people, and what I so love is that each step has really helped us better understand ourselves, better understand each other, and ultimately become more connected with each other. That all, all people come into relationships into life with hang-ups and tensions and fears. And, and to really say over the eight years, I think we've both done a tremendous job of like processing and healing through our connection together intimately and have become better people together and independently. Yeah, and I think something that comes up as you're saying that too, and we've <clears throat> talked about this, is how we're constantly changing, right? Um, and I remember when I was getting my master's in clinical psychology, one of the things that they told us in school is that many of you who are in relationships right now will have a difficulty staying in that relationship. And, you know, a lot of us were didn't quite understand why and the, the premise of that was you're going to do a lot of changing, a lot of evolving through the coursework of, you know, learning psychology and, and learning therapy, that it's going to make you as an individual change. And if your partner isn't on that same change trajectory, then you will find yourself at a particular point on the journey disconnected from your partner, right? Uh, and a lot of people in my class end up going through breakups and divorces and whatnot. Um, and I end up, you know, uh, dissolving or we, we end up decoupling the relationship I was in. But that's something I find that's really important for us is that we have both changed and our relationship has changed. But we have been committed to being on a similar change trajectory. Uh, and some of us, you know, sometimes he moves faster than me and sometimes I want to go in a different direction. And we have to work that out. Um, and sometimes we head in a little bit of a different direction. Uh, and and we, we see our partner from afar, and that creates a little bit of a riff. But then we always come back together. But we're tracking each other as we're making these changes. Um, because we are different people today than we are eight years ago. Yeah. Um, but we have grown together as different people. 
is it hard being with a partner who's very mercurial? Like I'm somebody who comes up with ideas, and as soon as it's ideas thought, it's in, it's being in, implemented, and I change and grow and evolve and come up with new things all the time. Is that challenging? Yeah, I don't I don't move as fast. It's like the tortoise and the hare. Uh, I think I I move a lot slower in my you know in my observation and my growth. Uh, so it can be challenging sometimes to be with someone who is moving so quickly. Um, and, you know, will, will not make mistakes, but do things that I'm not ready in line for. with, yeah. right? Or ready for. Or ready for. But you'll make, you know, 20 decisions and, you know, one or two of them uh, will be things that I, I'm not... It will take me a while to adjust to or I don't like. Whereas I'll make five, and all five of them I really like, but then I missed out on 15 things, right? So it's it's one of these things where there's so much going on and so much riches in our life. Uh, and some of the collateral damage is that I don't always agree, but I've come to learn to appreciate when I don't. Um, but that's taken time. And it's one of those things where they do say couples, I mean, I obviously wouldn't fall in love with you or be attracted to you if there wasn't that element of me who admired that or who liked that. And where I myself, for whatever reason, don't operate that way, but I really like it. And so I have to remind myself or go into that psychology and say, this is something you really love. You have a hard time with it or I have a hard time with it doing it myself, um, but how can you stand and admire it? And then how can we grow and, you know, I slow you down. And mm -hmm. I think that's been something that as a couple we've done, you know, he's made it to where I have to make decisions faster and I've learned to do that. And I've asked and uh, we've worked on getting him to slow down and not making such quick decisions. You know, we ground each other in different ways. Yeah. yeah. You definitely help root me, and I also help you root you too in times where things are really chaotic and stressful and spiraling. Yeah. What is it like being in day to day relationship with me? Just the, the mechanics of it. Do you enjoy or what is it like to interact with me throughout the day? Uh, so, something that's also very different that I, it's taken a lot to get used to is that my husband is extremely effusive. Uh, and I remember at the beginning of our relationship, <coughs> he used to just say all the time, I love you. I love you. Oh, I think you're so amazing. You're so beautiful. And I remember at the beginning, it would make me really uncomfortable because I felt like it wasn't authentic because he would say it so much. And I didn't grow up in a household where that was something that was constantly said. Like, you said it in a very, like big occasion or monumental yeah. or something that you did amazingly. His mother said to me once, you shouldn't have to know that I like you. I say nice things about you behind your back. Yes. So we're, we're a family that was very much like, uh, we're not going to be effusive about it because then it makes it feel inauthentic. And so I learned that. <clears throat> and, and I say that because that wasn't just when we met. That's how he operates like I will get texts throughout the day telling me how much he loves me and how beautiful I am and he'll call me and just say it um, and it's taken me and, and I think some people may think like that's a hard thing and I'm like yeah it was a hard thing for me at the beginning now it's something I absolutely love and it's so endearing uh, and it's something I crave um, but I think that's something that is is a different experience, and you're with you're like that with everybody, and if everybody that you love or you're very, he's very effusive with. Um, what's it like to be in in day to day interaction? Uh, I think too the other interesting thing is. Uh, we don't very often have like banal conversation. Mm -hmm. Like everything is very much, um, I don't want to say intense, but purposeful, right? And, and we're, we're not big 
uh, pop culture followers. So and we don't watch a ton of TV, so we're not going to be talking about episodes on television or what's going on in pop culture news. Um, when we have conversations or when we engage, it's typically about deeper, meaningful stuff, which I love um, and I come accustomed to, but I don't think that's most people's day-to-day -day conversations with their partner or with anybody. Um, so, like I said, what you get through the videos and what he talks about is what we talk about. You know, a lot of the videos that you make are, you know, snippets of our musings, are uh, conversations we've had on our walks, yeah. are things that we have, you know, turned over and uh, discussed. Yeah, so. something I frequently say is, <clears throat> even though I'm the person who hosts this YouTube channel, my husband is present in every one of the videos because almost everything that I post has been inspired by or refined through conversation with this beautiful man and how appreciative I am of that, of having a true partner and a sounding board and someone I consider my teacher as well and a confidant and a, and a guide and a companion and how amazing that person is is I also get to sleep next to him every night and I get to wake up next to him every day and uh, something I do most mornings is I say, will you marry me again today? It's a question I ask myself pretty much every day is, do I want to be married to this person today? And thus far, this many years in the relationship, it has every day been an emphatic yes. There's maybe like two days where I was like, I'm not sure. Let's, <laughs> let's dive a little bit deeper into that question. If only you knew what it was like to be married to be two days out of eight years is pretty damn freaking amazing. <laughs> what was it like, you know, my husband grew up Catholic. He almost became a Jesuit priest. What was it like encountering somebody who had a really deep spiritual tradition that was different than the one that, from which you came? Yeah, I mean, as young as I can remember, I felt very much pulled to spirituality. And I came from a Catholic uh, tradition. My parents weren't very religious, uh, but it was... It was the spiritual tradition in which my parents knew what to point me in the direction of as I started asking questions and inquiring about faith. Um, but I always felt that my spirituality was, I don't want to say bigger than the Catholic Church, but my questions, I felt, weren't always fully answered by the Catholic Church. Um, so while I pursued wanting a deeper spiritual practice in the church um, and was looking at becoming a priest and decided that uh, I felt called but not necessarily called to the pulpit so really trying to figure out what that expression of vocational calling would look like uh, and still trying to once I left uh, the church the Catholic Church kind of left the church altogether when I decided I was going to be a priest um, and, and just was like a, a spiritual nomad. So when I met my husband, and I was starting to get into yoga at the time before uh, meeting my husband, and the physical practice of yoga, and really wanting to dive deeper into the spiritual practice of yoga. And some of those teachings really resonated with me. Uh, so when I met my husband, uh, and that was so central to his identity, uh, it was an immediate interest. Uh, so it, it felt like a coming home in instances. And I was able to easily translate some of the learnings from the yogic tradition or the Eastern tradition into you know, some of the Western Catholic teachings that I knew. Um, so, so there wasn't a difficulty. I mean, I think my spirituality has been one that I have found to be very personal, uh, not centered in dogma, uh, but one that has been um, confirmed through a relationship with the divine in my own, in my own way. So, um, and that's something I appreciated about you. Yes. When we met, I was very insistent that we be monogamous, and we were monogamous for about six years. 
and then slowly kind of explored opening up the relationship and didn't do a terrible large amount of that. And though technically while we're still open, we've kind of reverted back to monogamy mode for the most part. Uh, I mean, it's been a long time since we've played with anybody else. What has that journey been like for you? And what does it feel like to be with a partner who keeps questioning and pushing boundaries and asking us to tap into these things and figure out why do we do what we do and you know have a lot of uncomfortable conversations about what are we attracted to, what do we want, what are we looking for as men, as partners, as spiritual beings, as sexual beings? What has that been like? Yeah, I mean, I think that's uh, that's been an interesting experience and journey. Uh, I think we... We approach sex similarly, but there are, I think, different aspects of it um, that we may differ on. I, I can have a much more playful experience with sex that doesn't need to be so tied to an emotional or spiritual connection. Um, but I prefer, I, I don't even know if preferred, my main desire for sexual encounter would be, you know, intimate and spiritual. And I feel like for you, it has been different. But also sex, you know, brings up other issues of jealousy and... That's something uh, you've experienced a lot with me. Yeah. And I didn't think I was very much of a jealous person until we started opening up our relationship. And I think it just meant other things to me too, because... It's, it, you know, to, to have in your head that your husband can only have sex if he's really connected and spiritually, like, turned on by somebody. And so then to see your husband have sex with someone and be like, are you spiritually turned on by them? Like, are you doing things that you've never done to me or done with me? Uh, and so, yes, the, the, the jealousy would come up that I was surprised about uh, and not proud of. I didn't want to be jealous. Um... So yeah, I think it just pushed into different aspects of our, of my psychology. And I think it was a hard thing too, is that I knew on a deeper level it had a lot to do about me and not so much about him. But because this was my husband, it felt like it was about him. It was just, it was complicated. Yeah. And there were instances, and there were things that I wanted to do that you weren't really interested in and so it's been things we've had to navigate. Have you um, enjoyed going back to pretty much just having sex with each other? Yeah, I mean, I have. And I think there's... It's easier, I will say that. Uh, yeah, it's easier. But it's not... Yeah, I think having explored different things... But I wouldn't be opposed to it. And I always say that. I'm not opposed to it. And then we start doing it. And I'm like, oh, I don't know if I like this. <laughs> so it's a, it's, yeah, it's an interesting adventure that, um, yeah. yeah. I don't know. Where do you see us? Where do you see me? Where do you see the work we're doing together? Because, again, I kind of shared this is, I feel like the work is very much integral to both of our, both our connection, our relationship to each other. All of the stuff that we're doing is, is a big part of it. Where do you see all of this going in time? Yeah, I mean, I still hold that intention, and we still talk about it, of having a retreat center. You know, um, the work that I do, I think, it has been centered in HIV work, but I see HIV work as work that I do primarily with gay men uh, around healing and wholeness um and I, I look forward to doing that in a way that isn't just hiv focused um, and something that i find to be a great benefit uh, and I, I consider myself a social worker in, in many ways a great benefit of being a social worker or doing the line of work that we do is that when you do it well when you help people uh, you also get healed. And so yeah. it's, it is almost a selfish uh, desire to have a space for other people to experience healing uh, as a way for me to continue to be healed. Um, 
and I see you continuing to be healed. We all have areas of growth and healing to do. Um, and I love doing it in community uh, with other people. So, yeah, I mean, I've been so impressed by the community you've been able to cultivate through your work online and look forward to being able to do that in physical space as much a virtual space. Uh, so I see that as our next journey, our next step. Um, I'm excited about doing that with you. Uh, as you said, we've worked a lot together and I tend to be more behind the scenes. Um, but I look forward to being you know, there next to you and with you uh, as we start to create more physical space for people. And last question. What's one thing you wish people knew about me? That's an interesting one. Because I feel like so many people know so much. I think just how genuinely a kind and good person you are. Yeah, that it's not, it's not an act that you put on. It's not... Um, for show, but that you are genuinely a kind and good person. And it's the sexiest thing I find about you. Ditto. So. Ditto. I frequently say the sexiest quality about a person is their heart, and it's what turns me on about you every day. Mm. Well, that's my beautiful husband, Anthony. Thank you for taking a little bit of time with us. I hope you found this enjoyable. I'll see you next time.